Are you somebody who's dealing with a disc herniation and you're wondering what you can do to help speed up your healing time and you're wondering how long this actual injury is going to take? Well, this episode is going to cover that. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Josh. In today's video, we're going to talk about disc herniations, what you can do to start healing this thing faster and how long it will actually take to heal this problem. When it comes to a disc herniation, most doctors tell you that the average person should do some rehab or some exercises for approximately six weeks time. But where does this number come from and is this actually right? Well, according to the research in mice, yes, this was done in mice, the average disc herniation healed between six and 12 weeks. So this is where we get a lot of the information from is from our mice studies or studies that we do in the lab but this doesn't necessarily apply to humans because humans are completely different. And according to the research that we have today, they say that approximately 65% of people who have this type of low back pain will have some sort of reoccurrence or some continued pain within the one year time. So 65% of people will have this after one year. Before you freak out, I want you to know that this might mean that you might only have a little bit amount of pain or a small amount of pain for just a couple days. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll continuously have an aggressive amount of pain or a severe amount of pain one year later. That being said, I'm going to tell you some of my personal experience with disc herniations and treating them professionally. And I'm also going to share with you the top things that you can do to help increase your healing. And I'm also going to tell you and talk to you about some of the common mistakes that people do when it comes to disc herniations. So that maybe if you are dealing with this, that it doesn't necessarily last six weeks or 12 weeks or two years or something like that. On average, I typically tell patients that they should expect to deal with this for three to six months time, usually on an average of three to four months, that you really need to start working into this before your body starts to feel really strong and confident. The truth is when it comes to disc herniations, there are so many factors that actually deal with how fast or how slow the recovery is. And there's actually so many factors that we can't even talk about it in this entire video, but I am going to show you my top six or seven techniques and things that you can talk to or talk about when it comes to actually getting results faster so that this doesn't take four months or six months. It takes three months or two months or even less. So one of the biggest factors, if not the biggest factor when it comes to healing from this injury properly has to do with the quality of your provider, your therapist, or your coach. Unfortunately, not all therapists are creative equal and not everybody specializes in this type of condition. And so really you may have a therapist that tells you this or that or these other things, but do they have results to back it? Do they have the right methods, proper protocols, procedures? Do they know what to expect when it comes to this type of route? And do they have a proper roadmap? And have they done this before? Because having done this before many, many times myself, there is actually a lot of predictability in this and you can kind of forecast and, and, and see things very, very clear. You know, it's like going out and watching the weather system or something like that. It's really, really important to forecast and understand what's going on. But when it comes to your rehab, the quality of therapist and the type of therapy that you get is absolutely the most important thing. I also wanted to say when it comes to doing therapy on your own and watching a bunch of YouTube videos and doing things like this and watching these videos, it can be really, really important and it can be really, really helpful to get the right information down but if you expect to actually solve this issue on your own, it may be a lot more cumbersome and a lot longer to take you. So it's really important that you not only find the right therapist, but you do it in a proper time frame. Another major factor is that you need to relearn your patterns, your movement patterns, and you need to stop triggering activities. One of the ultimate goals of your rehab and your exercises is to help retrain and relearn how to move better so that you can get stronger, so that you can reduce the forces that go through the spine so that you don't continuously hit the nerve and increase the issue. In addition to that, there are also certain things that often exacerbate or increase lower back pain, sciatica, disc herniations, and disc bulges. So knowing what to avoid while you're on the right path is actually going to help you more. And I find that most people who actually have low back pain, one of the best things they can do is avoid triggering symptoms. A third most important thing is when it goes back to your rehab protocol, less is more. I find that doing less exercises 
more efficiently with better techniques, instead of having a laundry list of just random exercises, you really wanna have a few quality exercises that you can do at a time. You wanna master them, you wanna get the right technique because that's going to help build strength, resilience, and it's gonna teach your body how to move better. Again, going back to relearning movement, it comes down to doing less so that you can do more. If you have 100 different exercises, it's going to be hard to be really great at them. But if you have a whole five different exercises, you might really find that that helps you significantly. Hey, if you're still dealing with low back pain, make sure you download our lower back pain relief guide. This guide has some of our best exercises to help you and your low back. So another major factor when it comes to lower back pain is stretching. The research has showed that stretching can be helpful but overall, it's very minimally effective. So especially when it comes to numbness, tingling, burning, or neurologic symptoms. So if you have sciatica or a disc herniation that's putting pressure down into a nerve, we find that stretching is actually not the best thing. And this could be part of what triggers some of your other issues. So knowing what triggers it and knowing that stretching isn't going to be the best thing overall, what we wanna do is focus on stability exercises and learning how to retrain and correct your movement. Another major factor when it comes to actually healing this sciatica or disc herniations is the size of the herniation, the location, as well as the number of segments affected. So obviously the larger the issue, sometimes the more struggle you may have. The location, if it puts direct pressure right onto the nerve, it can be a lot more pain and discomfort and it might take a quite a while just to reduce the inflammation. So you might be in the pain relief stage for quite a while versus instead of two weeks. In addition, we find that in, in terms of the research, the more amount of levels, meaning if you have L4, L5, and S1, so if you have three levels versus one level, we find that there's more inflammation, more irritation, and it's actually just harder to treat. It makes sense because that means there's probably going to be more damage in the spine and it's going to take longer to fix. Another major factor, which is probably no surprise to you, is smoking and comorbidities. It is no surprise that if you are healthier and you have better habits and healthy habits that you are likely going to heal faster, especially if you are somebody who smokes because you're reducing oxygen, blood flow, and nutrients not only to the whole body, to the spine and to the injured areas themselves. So if you can give up smoking, great. If you can improve your blood sugar and your glucose levels and all these other factors, this really may help you significantly heal. Finally, a very overlooked problem when it comes to low back pain is sleep. If you don't sleep, you are not going to be healing as fast or with the same level of quality. Not only is this going to drive up hormonal responses when you're not sleeping, but it's going to drive up your heart rate, your stress, and you're just not going to heal as well. There is a lot of evidence that says those people who have chronic low back pain and don't sleep well have higher systemic or blood levels where there's higher levels of inflammation inside the blood. So moral of the story is make sure you sleep because it's something that's overlooked and it's something that most people say that, oh, I don't, I don't need to do that. I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm one of those people. Most people are not one of those people and this actually ends up hurting them in the long term. If you're somebody who's still dealing with lower back pain, make sure you download our low back pain relief guide. It has some of our top exercises to help relieve some of your low back pain and it also has some of the top things you can do to avoid triggering back pain so that you can actually get on your healing journey. If you found this helpful, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss videos just like this. We'll also show you how to fix some of these issues. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.